three days ago, the legendary robotics expert Tony Dice passed away. He worked on several different movies during his career, including Moonraker, Superman 2, and, of course, Star Wars. In honor of the man, we're going to talk about his most famous build, R2-D2. Designed by the late John Steers and the also late Ralph McQuarrie, R2-D2 is one of the most iconic and easily recognizable characters in the Star Wars universe. In-universe, the little guy has a long and varied career, starting as an astromech droid on Queen Amidala's Nubian-class starship. What's a Nubian? I'd say anyone who's seen the movies knows his next around 50 years, so there's no reason to get into that. In Star Wars Legends, he actually survives well into the future and eventually serves Mara Jade and Luke Skywalker's great-grandson, Cade Skywalker. Behind the scenes, R2 also had an interesting life. C-3PO and R2-D2 were actually inspired by the comic relief characters from Akira Kurosawa's The Hidden Fortress, Tahei and Motoshichi. There's some debate as to who came up with the name of R2-D2, but most people agree that credit goes to the sound editor, Walter Murch. Legend goes that in the editing room of American Graffiti, Murch asked for Real 2, Dialogue Track 2, in its abbreviated form, R2-D2. And waking from sleep, George Lucas heard the designation and said, that would make a good idea for a character, immediately going back to sleep. Oh, that Lucas, he is like a sleepy little sponge. Using nothing but the script that Lucas crapped out, Macquarie designed that adorable blue and gray sucker we know today. As well as Darth Vader, Chewbacca, and several other characters. For the first movie, there were two different designs, one controlled by remote and one worn by actor Kenny Baker. In Empire, another two remote-controlled R2s had to be built for the swamp scenes on Dagobah. In the Jabba's Palace portions of Return of the Jedi, the R2 unit couldn't make it down the stairs, so if you rewatch the scene, it cuts just as he gets to the top of the stairs. Ben Burt, who created the sounds for the lightsabers and Darth Vader's breathing, also created R2-D2's speech patterns. This guy was practically a Tolkien-level linguist. He created several of the on-screen languages that we hear throughout the series. After trial and error, Bert found that using baby noises combined with a synthesizer provided the best possible voice for R2. This man is a genius. That's one thing I love about these old school movie makers. If there wasn't a tool to do something, they invented the tool. Well, that's all I have to say on this subject, guys. Rest in peace to the late Tony Dyson, legendary robotics expert. If you have any comments or well wishes, put them down in the comments for us. If you would like this video, subscribe to our channel. And I will see you next week for another Star Wars Monday. Signing off. What's a Nubian?